Today, we are going to work with 8x8 LED matrix. No drivers, no libraries, just the bare part. Should be straightforward, right? Let's run the quick test first without Arduino to see how this part works. We have 8 rows and 8 columns. Don't be confused here, the part is rotated by 90 degrees. The matrix we have is the common cathode. Ok, so connecting it should be fairly straightforward, right? Wrong. The pinout for this part is completely messed up and connecting it to Arduino is a bit of a nightmare. Going back to our test. We connect 5 volt power supply to the breadboard. Let's lit LED at 1st row and 4th column. We connect power source negative to the 1st row pin via 330 ohm current limiting resistor. This is to prevent LED from being damaged. Power source positive is connected to 4th column pin. When this is done, you can see the LED lits. When we disconnect jump wire from 4th column pin, we can try to lit all other LEDs in row 1. Easy! So now let's leave this uh, LED on and light up another LED, e.g. the one at 7th row and 6th column, starting with connecting power source negative to the pin of row 7. Wait, what has just happened here? One LED just came on, why? Since column number 4 is connected to 5 volts, any row we connect to ground would lit a corresponding LED in column 4. So this is not really what we wanted. Let's see what will happen when we connect 5 volts to the 6th column. Great, now we have 4 LEDs lit. So lighting up a single LED is simple, but if we want to light more, things are getting more complicated. Before we go and address this, let's write a simple program to see if all LEDs of the matrix are ok. To do this, we need to connect all the matrix pins to Arduino. Before we start, we'll add 8 resistors between matrix row pins and Arduino pins. All rows would be connected to Arduino through those resistors. I designed in Tinkercad a stand for this matrix, which would hold it in place and make the wiring and filming the end result much easier. Finally, we connect 16 jumper wires to the matrix and when done, one by one, we are connecting matrix pins to Arduino pins. We are ready. In the code we need to declare all the pins first and set them as outputs. And also assign high signal to the rows and low signal to the columns so that at the beginning of the code all LEDs are off. Then we need two functions. Select row function reads the row number and selects that row by sending low signal to the corresponding pin and sending high signal to pins of all the other rows. Select column function reads the column number and sends high signal to the corresponding pin and low to pins of all the other columns. In main loop we have two for loops. The first one is executed eight times, once for each row. In that loop we select the row with the select row function. Then we have a second for loop 
also executed eight times, once for each column. In this loop, we select a column. When both row and column are selected, the LED where that row and column cross lights up. We have a short delay before we go on and start lighting up other LEDs. After both four loops are completed, we should have addressed all 64 LED positions, lighting up all LEDs in the process. Let's see whether this would work. Works perfectly. We confirm all 64 LEDs are okay. Now let's move to more complicated stuff. I want to display 8x8 pixel art. Let's pick this one. This clip art can be represented as two-dimensional array in Arduino code. How can we display this clip art knowing of the LED addressing issues we stumbled upon at the beginning of this video? The answer is multiplexing. How does it work? The way it works is that we select the first row by sending low signal to it and then we send high signal to all the columns in which the corresponding LED in the first row should be lit. When this is done, we deselect the first row and select the second one and do the same action and then we repeat this for all the other rows. The faster you do it, the sequence of lit LEDs begins to look like a cat. When we do it slowly, it does not have a desired effect. When Arduino is doing it fast enough, you experience an optical illusion, often called persistence of vision, where your eye no longer sees each row being displayed at a time, but rather it sees all rows lit together at the same time. In the code we still need select row function, but we no longer need select column one. We have a set LED in active row function. Here we pass to the function the column number as well as the signal value, high for lighting the LED and low for turning it off. With a particular row selected, we can run this function multiple times, litting up multiple LEDs in that row. In the code, we have our clip hut representation. In main loop, again we have two nested for loops. In first one, we select the row with select row function. In second for loop, we scan the table in selected row and lit all the LEDs for which the corresponding position in table is equal to 1. We introduce 2 milliseconds delay during which the particular row remains lit. You notice that in the final result the LEDs are not that bright anymore. The reason is that they are off for most of the time, being lit up only one eighth of the time. Let's see that again. Now that we feel comfortable with displaying any image on the matrix, the question is, can we do something more fancy, like text scrolling? I prepared a text sample to scroll. Just like a pixel art, it can also be represented in Arduino code as a two-dimensional array. It is larger than 8x8, so the way we'll be doing it, we'll be displaying columns 1 to 8, then 2 to 9, and so on. This way we'll achieve the scroll effect. We need the same two functions that we used for displaying the pixel art. Again we see the table that represents the text we want to scroll. We introduce one addition variable position, which indicates which 64 LEDs from the table are currently being displayed. Then we have two nested for loops that we had in previous program, which display 64 LEDs from the table, just like we did in case of 8x8 pixel art. And then we repeat displaying the part of this table five times before increasing position variable and starting displaying the new set of 64 LEDs. Let's send the sketch to the board and see how this is going to work out. Looks great! To make it look better, I designed in Tinkercad a diffusion panel for this matrix 
and again made the use of my 3D printer. This is pretty much it for today. My next video would also be about 8x8 matrixes and this time we would look at available tools to make it easier to control it and potentially have better quality when displaying text or clip arts on the matrix. Don't forget to visit my channel to check it out.